Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are continuing with Saturday's message in Joshua chapter 7, the end of it. A lot of times we don't realize that we've got things hidden in our lives, and we think we're doing all right spiritually. We think that we're doing, uh, you know, we feel pretty comfortable. Let's put it like that. And we are at a point where sometimes God is saying, don't sit back and get too comfortable because there are hidden things amongst your stuff that are bringing curses into your life. Or let's say in our day and age, bringing hardship. There are certain things that are bringing or making life harder on you. So let's look at what some of those possibilities could be. Um, sometimes we are, we can be stubborn. We can be a stubborn generation. And God could be blessing us and lining us up for a blessing. And we won't accept his blessing. Now, uh, there was a conversation we had a while back. And in this conversation, we were talking about that joke. That joke that they tell over pulpits where a person, uh, I guess some big disaster happened and a person is hanging off the edge of the cliff and they're praying that God would come and rescue them. And there was a, a flood and earthquake and all kind of stuff happens. So here comes a boat, a rowboat. Some guys are in the boat and they're escaping for their life. And they pull up and they say, jump and, and uh, it's only a few feet and, uh, and you land here in our boat and we'll take you to shore. And the person says, no, nah, that's all right. God's going to protect me. God's going to, he's going to come get me. And then someone else hollers from a helicopter flying overhead. Come on, we'll drop down the ladder and you climb up. No, God's going to protect me. He's going to come get me. And then somebody else is on the upper end of the cliff and uh, and, and they're saying, here, we'll send you a rope and, uh, and we'll send down a team to help pull you up. No, God's going to help me. He's going to protect me. So when the person ends up in heaven, you know what that means, their demise. They end up in heaven and they're asking God, well, God, I've called on you. I cried out to you and you said you would never leave me nor forsake me. And here I am on the edge. And, and how did I get here? What happened? And God said, I sent you the rowboat. I sent the helicopter and I sent the rescue team but you chose not to allow me to save your life through them. So here you are. So sometimes we think it's a, in a cursed thing, a hidden thing in our stuff. Sometimes it's, it's our flesh that we treasure. We treasure things of our flesh and we think they're good things because we're following God no matter what. And sometimes God is saying, hit the world where the world hit you, but you won't do it. So you end up doing without. Life is hard on you or your life ends as a result of stubbornness. Then you have other situations where you will not forgive someone. You choose to live a life of unforgiveness bitterness and resentment and you don't realize that that bitterness resentment and anger is is festering in your body and when you have negative emotions that cling to you and that you cling to you you nurture so to speak they build up toxins in your body which releases uh harmful chemicals and the harmful chemicals begin to wreak havoc in your body and on your health. 
and your body and your health begins to decline. And you're wondering, well, what's going on? Where did the cancer come from? Where did the hole in the stomach come from? Where did that ulcerous thing come from? Where did the, the I mean, all kind of stuff starts going cuckoo. You may end up with, with um, lymphoma, different sorts of cancer and all kind of stuff. And, and the high blood pressure and heart issues. And you're wondering, well, you know, what's wrong? Well, you've got a heart condition, but your heart condition is hidden. It's hidden. Nobody knows. You almost don't know it. You buried it so much under life. You haven't dealt with the fact that you still resent Uncle Uncle Tony for doing that. And you still resent Mommy for doing the other or for not doing what she should do. And you resent your father for not being there. And you have issues with this race because the kids from that race picked on you when you were a kid. So you've got prejudice issues as an adult. I mean, you've got all this stuff hidden among your stuff while you're praising God over it. And you're praising God over stuff. And you don't realize that when you have stuff hidden, just because it's hidden doesn't mean it's inactive. It's the same as a person who lives near a mine area where the government has buried or there is some buried um, radioactive chemical <clears throat> and it's buried, it's hidden and the community may not know about it, but the community is suffering from cancer, an outbreak of cancer and they're wondering why. And then all of a sudden somebody lets it be known that the hidden chemicals seeping into the soil has affected the whole community. Mm. And even though they didn't know it was there, did not stop it from harming them. Isn't that crazy? It's the same with us. When we have hidden stuff in our emotions, in our psyche, our attitudes, our flesh, it's affecting us in a very negative way, even though, even though we don't know it, it's still there. And if it's there and not being dealt with, it's doing harm. Now I'm going to read to you verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell him now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. When I coveted them, then I coveted them, and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garments and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord, the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger wherewith the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Now, you notice it said uh, in verse 24, 
and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan and his sons. They took the silver, they took the gold, they took the garment, they took his sons, his daughters, all his family members, his, his, his cattle, all his cattle, every item he owned, everything that was in his life, and they took all of it so it can all be burned, buried, and gotten rid of along with him and his family members. Now, this is what I want to say about that. Your family members could be suffering because of the things you cherish, because of the things that you're holding hostage, that you're, that you're, uh, some of you are, are pampering these areas of your flesh. And people that are in your sphere of influence suffer because of it. So curses, we're not only talking supernatural curses here. We're talking uh, bad fortune. We're talking negative influence, consequences, uh, domino effect, ripples. Just like throwing a rock in water and the ripples. One little rock can ripple out a long ways in water. Even the water that's far out that's not even in that vicinity is affected by a ripple. So my question to you is what kind of ripple effects do you want? You want to wear people out? You want to get on people's nerves? You want to always have an issue paying your bills because of these ripples, the ripple effects? of the things that you hold so dear, so near to your heart. You think they're good at good uh you think they're good characteristics and God is saying no, you're being dumb. I need you to be wise right now. But you're not hearing me. I need you to get rid of that. But you're keeping it. You cherish it too much. I remember people that I had on my list when I was young. And I'm telling you, I enjoyed resenting them. This is when I was unsaved. I enjoyed resenting them. And I enjoyed not forgiving them. I enjoyed the bitterness, so I thought. Because I'm telling you, bitterness takes away. It totally null and void your peace. Bitterness is not a good thing. So here I was enjoying the bitterness and I had about, let me see, one, two, about five people at the top of that list. I, I knew them either by name or by act, whether it was the rape or whatever it was, I had them at the top of my list and I knew who they were. I could see them with my mind's eye. And one day after I got saved, it was maybe a couple of months or a week or a couple of weeks. Very short time after I got saved, I was reading scripture. And the scripture said, in essence, if you're not willing to forgive others for what they've done to you, then I will not, your Father in heaven, will not forgive you your trespasses. Oh, really now? In spite of what they did to me? You really think that I should deserve them? Well, see, I didn't like that. So I told the Lord I didn't like it. I made confession. And I said, now, if it's that important to you, and it's not to me, because if they died today or tomorrow, I would just dance on their grave and throw a party. But since it's that important to you for me to forgive, then this is what I ask you. Give me the ability I don't have, because I don't. If you want me to forgive, please enable me to do so. Sure enough, God answered that prayer, because he made sure I crossed the paths of three of them in my life. And every single time, the, oh my goodness, the first two was so miraculous, it just, it, it, had, it set my head spinning. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't help but smile. I realized the 
lump in my throat and the knot in my gut was gone. The anger was gone. The bitterness was gone. I was amazed. I said, Lord, how did you do that? And that's when I realized not one negative emotion that we have cherished and harbored in our lives. Not one of them needs to stay. Not one. Not one. You can get rid of every negative emotion by simply picking it up and putting it in the Lord's hands. Casting all your cares on him, for he cares for us. Now, so, a lot of times destruction comes into our lives. Dismay, problems, unnecessary turmoil, unnecessary crisis after crisis after crisis happens because we will not abide by God's ways. Some of God's ways are hard ways, and we think that we're never to be hard. So anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. But there are certain judgment calls that God allows. He's a God of judgment, not just a God of mercy. And we too, under his instruction, can be a people of judgment at the right times. And I'll leave that alone. Now, a lot of times we lean to our own understanding and we have our own concept of what being a good Christian is about. But the Bible does say the violent take it by force. And it's referring, it's encouraging Christians to understand there are times to take some things by force. In Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. There's a time to love and there's a time to kill. Now, in our day, we would use that figuratively speaking. And there are times that we need to kill some things in our lives. We need to kill some relationships. It does not mean we have not forgiven. It means we need to kill the relationship because the relationship could either be toxic, narcissistic, abusive, vindictive, okay? <laughs> or just straight out unhealthy. And you have to know who to cut out of your life. It doesn't mean you won't be there if there's a crisis and they need help and there's an offering and you give to that offering or they need a ride and you give them a ride, you drop them off, they're done. That's the, But you don't mind helping, but you don't have them in your close vicinity because you know they're bad news. There's a difference between handling people with a long-handled spoon and being resentful. You can forgive a person and still keep them at a distance for your own protection or for your family's protection or just because you know that God said, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? So there are some, some relationships that have to be watered down in order for you not to be negatively influenced, okay? All right, so those are some of the hidden things in our lives. Just because you don't know does not mean it will not have a negative effect on your life. See, Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Now with the Lord, yes, he grants mercy where there's ignorance. But in life, consequences come. You may not know that fire burns. You hold your finger over that fire to find out what it feels like. Whether you know it or whether you don't, what will happen? You will get burned. And many times we go through life and we wonder why things are hard and why things come in certain ways and certain nasty flavors with certain uh, stenches and certain hardships and one, one obstacle after another obstacle and 
we don't realize that even if we're doing something ignorantly, it still has its negative effect. You could be on a train going somewhere really nice to have fun. And you may not know that the conductor, not the conductor, but the engineers behind the scenes have accidentally switched tracks. And you think you're heading one way and you end up heading another. And that one mistake on someone else's behalf may have caused you to miss a great opportunity that was waiting it for you at the end of that journey. We are intertwined. We affect each other. Our choices affect each other. Whether it's a hidden, now that would be hidden because you wouldn't know that your track was, was uh, switched until you get to the wrong destination. Hmm. Yeah. And see, Satan switches our tracks a lot. If we're not praying, if we're not careful, if we're not listening to sound counsel, our tracks get shifted. Some of you won't go and get checked when you know you have a physical crisis. Your track gets shifted. What you were about to do, you can't do because now your life is all about just staying alive. Because now it's harder on you than it needed to be. That's not God cursing you. That's consequence of a poor choice, of waiting too long. People wait too long and find out they have fourth stage cancer. They don't handle the symptoms early. They wait too long. <clears throat> People wait too long to handle situations in their families and confront issues and divorce takes place. They wait too long and adultery creeps in. They wait too long and they, they allow pent up emotions and negative attitudes to pile up. And next thing you know, they say cutting, cutting things, hard things. And they're doing damage, trying to be Christian. They're doing damage with their tongue, with their attitude. And then they think because they apologize, it's going to be okay. But the damage is done, even though you apologize. Hmm. Because you didn't catch it before it came out. You didn't catch it before that attitude flared up. You didn't allow the Holy Spirit to help you maintain self-control. You didn't fly above the storm, above the attitude. You didn't climb and maintain. No. No. No, you nosedived into that thing and crashed. And people get hurt. Because of your attitude. Because of how poorly you handled your attitudes. You had to say things. You had to do things with a certain attitude. You had to have a chip on your shoulder. So you used your tongue as a double-edged sword. And you sliced the people you love. You cut them deeply. And then you want to apologize. I'm sorry. You know I love you. But the damage is done. See, that's that hidden stuff that we keep deep down in our hearts we don't know. That's that hidden stuff. All right. Now that's enough of that. Let's pray and ask God, Lord, examine my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Ask the Lord to show you what's not right with you, even in all the best intentions, as they call the best laid plans of mice and men. You check yourself and ask God to check you for you with truth. He says, I require truth on the inward part. Yes, he does. And if you ask him to show you honestly what's going on, then you truthfully acknowledge what God has shown you. And turn from it the best way you can. Ask God to give you the ability to eliminate that out of your character because you've been hurting people. 
You're fussing about what everybody else is doing wrong while you're the one doing the biggest damage. Hmm. Be very careful about that. All right. Ask God to make you aware if you're damaging your family members. To make to, to highlight it as soon as it happens so you can see what your behavioral pattern really is. You know, when people gain weight, you ever notice? I look at some of the pictures of me from way back and I am devastated. I'm, I'm oh my goodness, I want to hide in a hole. I was that big. I didn't realize that I didn't see it when I looked in the mirror. Didn't see it. I knew I was bigger. I knew I was heavier when I looked at the smaller pictures. But I didn't know it was that big when I was looking at myself. There's something psychologically that we don't see. We don't see how grotesque we look until we lose some of that mess. And then we look back and look at the old pictures and then we see how grotesque we looked. Well, when I looked at myself, it looked like I had all these mounds of meat hanging around my face. And I said, oh my goodness, I can show you a picture right now. It blew me away. I packed it up, but... I just thought about it. It blew. I just found it last night, going through a bunch of boxes. Blew me away. I said, I didn't know I was that big. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know I ever got that big. I didn't see it looking in the mirror. See, there are times we're looking at ourselves in the spirit realm. We're examining ourselves. We're asking God. We're praying. We're doing our best to follow God. But we don't see what he sees. We don't see the grotesque image that God sees. And I'm telling you, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But I'm telling you, it is it is freaky when you look back and realize what God had to dealt with, what he had to deal with in you all those years. And you never even knew. You never even knew it. It's the craziest thing. We don't see ourselves the way God does. We fix the picture psychologically. We're not as big as we think we are. We're not as messed up as we think we are. Huh? Yeah, because you know you're messed up here. You know you're messed up there. And you say, okay, well, God's going to help me. And I'm going to get that together. I don't like that about myself. But you're carrying a, a boatload of stuff behind you that goes with you everywhere you go. Where you are truly jacked up and you don't see that. Because you're busy criticizing other people and their flaws in your mind. And you turn a psychological blind eye to your own. You ever go in the bathroom and have to take care of business and you forgot to bring the air freshener, and you got to tolerate your own mess. Oh, you sit there, you tolerate it, and you get done, and you, you know, away goes troubles down the drain. But that lingering <clears throat> stench takes a while to go away, doesn't it? But it's your stench. Mm -hmm. So you can tolerate it even though you may not like it. But you walk in the bathroom where somebody else's stench is in there. Woo! Lord! What? crawled up in them and died. Oh my goodness. Because your stink never is as bad as someone else's. That's the way we are as people. My stuff don't stink. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So you can tolerate your own flaws way more easily. You can tolerate you know, when you need deodorant and when you, you know, you need to flush that toilet two or three times. You can tolerate that. But you walk in behind someone else that left a stink bomb and you are ready to burn the bathroom down. How dare they leave that stink behind? Who wants to come in behind somebody else's? Like your stuff doesn't stink. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's something about how we respond to other people's flaws in ways that are, which is so righteously indignant 
But, well, with us, God understands, and he'll, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. You know, I don't mean any harm, and, oh, God, please help me, Lord. And, oh, we have all these excuses, and all of the, oh, my God, all these apologies. Woo! It's crazy. It's crazy. But that's the way we are as human beings. We have a lot of hidden stuff that we don't deal with. Either because we don't know it yet, we don't see it when we examine ourselves, or we're in denial. One, it's, it's one of those three. Usually it's one of those three. So anyway, what I want to say to you is go to God, ask him to show you, you. Put the real mirror up there. Yeah. Put the truth. Will the real so-and-so, so-and-so please stand up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then let God get, get rid of that real, the real ugly side of you. He can and he will, but you have to keep plugging at it. Don't deal with it casually. Go in like a bulldozer, baby, and drive out the enemy. Because everything in you that works against you is the enemy. Even if it's hidden from you, it's still working against you. Mm. Okay, now we're going to end on a positive note. This is for those of you who are in a good place right now. <clears throat> God wants to encourage you. And this is very brief. And I'm going to read Psalms 115. And then we will be done. Psalms 115. Where is it? There it is. Psalms 115. And I read. All right. Now keep that in mind what we just talked about. You know, don't, don't lay that aside and stick it in the drawer and forget about it. We got we all have to deal with that, including me. All right. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us. Let me see. What part do I want to read? Um, here it is. Here it is. Okay, verse 9. Psalms 115, verse 9. 115, verse 9, and on. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. See, you don't have to be perfect, but your fear of the Lord must be. Fear the Lord as you examine yourself. That's when you get the most help. All right, verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Don't you want to grow? Don't you want your life to say something, to count for something? God will do that for you. All right. Um, ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The dead, Praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. See, God has blessings for us, even when we're still doing the cleanup job. You ever get told, go take a bath real quick so that we can all go over to so-and-so's house. They're having a party. Well, you know, there's a good thing laying ahead of you. But first, you must wash away the filth, right? Well, that's the way we do in our lives with the Lord. We're steadily washing away filth. Even though he has good things for us, we have to attend to the filth in order to keep our lives as positive as possible. Life brings challenges. Life brings trials. Life will bring crisis after crisis. Troubles are laid up for men as the sparks fly upward. But we will be delivered out of them all 
by God. That's his promise to us. But he also promises there is trouble in life. So when you know that there are good things coming as well, you still have to continue to clean up job. You don't sit down on your job of cleaning. Your cleaning job is a never ending job. You ever hear a, a woman say a mother's work is never done? Well, a Christian's cleansing is never done. A Christian's healing is never done. A Christian's edification, growth, the growth process, it, that's never done. But know that there are blessings and pleasures waiting behind different corners. God has surprises for us all along the way. He has rewards. As long as we stay at the cleaning process, God is constantly ready to reward us. But just don't go into denial and act like your stuff doesn't stink. Always remember, as long as I fear God, as long as I'm trying, I'm in a good place with the Lord. I'm not a, in a perfect place, but I'm in a good place with the Lord because God sees me coming to him with my flaws, with my imperfections, with my sinful ways, with my propensities, my fleshly ways, my selfish ways, my attitudes. God sees me coming to him constantly. Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purify me, help me. Mm. I hope that encourages you. As long as you keep coming to him, when he says take a bath, Lord, help me wash. Because he sees where you can't see. He'll wash those areas for you that you can't reach. Stay in, stay in his face. Even when you smell your own stink. Even when you see your own perfections. That's when you get even closer to God. When you're at your weakest, your lowest ebb, that's when you stay closest to God. That's what he wants from you. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is for you. God is mindful of you. And he will bless you. God bless you. Amen.